Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. It's Amber. If you're new here, I'm on a health journey and just documenting it. I'm not here to tell you what to eat or how to eat. I'm just sharing with you things that I'm doing uh, to be helpful to you if you're on your own journey. Right now I am following a gluten-free, dairy-free, refined sugar, meaning like white sugar, free diet due to some inflammation problems I've been having. Um, so all three of these recipes are along those guidelines. I basically forgot to film an intro to this video. This is what's happening. So I'm editing the video. The one day this week I decided to not put on makeup is of course the day I have to get on camera. Um, I've had makeup on in all these clips that you've seen. Why did I not film the intro then? Wh who's to say? Why am I like this? I don't know. I've already made the blueberry muffins and the soup. They are both delicious. I've been eating them for days. And tonight I'm making the buffalo chicken casserole that you're gonna see at the end of the video. So we have blueberry muffins, a Zupa Toscana soup, which is, that is the sausage and potato soup that you can get from like Olive Garden, I think. Um, I used to love that. I haven't gone there in years, but I used to love getting that soup. So I'm gonna make that. And then we have a buffalo chicken casserole that I already said that is made with spaghetti squash. So that one's gonna take a little extra prep because I'm gonna cook my chicken and my spaghetti squash before combining it into a casserole. So let's stay tuned and see these recipes. All of the links are in the description box below, of course. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoy them. Let's get straight into these blueberry muffins. Yes, these are gluten-free and delicious. Screenshot the ingredients if you would like for your shopping list later. First, we're gonna start off with our almond flour and then I'm gonna add my dry ingredients which is baking soda and salt to it and mix it the recipe that is below just says mix them all together but I used to bake and um, I just can't I have to mix my dry ingredients first I'm a bit neurotic at this point and then I find it really helpful if I just break the yolks on my eggs and give it a very quick little zhuzh it just helps them incorporate easier into the dough. You're not chasing around one of those yolks that won't break. And then in goes the rest of my wet ingredients, my maple syrup, olive oil, I actually used avocado oil, uh, vanilla, apple cider vinegar. I was a little worried about the apple cider vinegar. Make sure you add it, it's delicious. It helps with the baking soda to help with the rice. So make sure you don't leave it out. And then this took about a minute to combine. The great thing about gluten-free baking is you don't have to worry about them ever getting tough. So if you overmix it, it's not possible. Then in goes our blueberries. I thawed my frozen blueberries out on the counter for about an hour before adding them. If you want to drain the juice, you're more than welcome to. But for me, that's just free flavor. So why would I put that down the drain? I don't mind a little discoloration in my batter because I'm not selling these. I'm eating these. So that's what I decided to do. But you do whatever you'd like. My daughter actually loved these so much that she wanted me to send them to school with her. So this is a big win in our family. And I'll definitely have these on repeat. I like to kind of switch out which muffins I'm doing just to keep things fresh. So these will be on the list for sure. Get yourself an ice cream scoop that has the little thing that helps clean it out and it'll be the easiest baking you've ever done. Just kind of a level ice cream scoop in each one. I ended up getting eight muffins with this batter, even though it says six. I would rather have it not completely domed up on the top and get a little bit more servings out of them. Make sure you pair this with something like Greek yogurt or something with protein, uh, eggs. I'm just showing you the muffin portion. And now I'm adding a seed mix on top. This is completely up to you if you wanna do this. I make this super seed mix. You know, like this has basically lasted me almost a month so far. And I just sprinkle it on everything, salads, anything I can think of, I sprinkle this seed mix on for because it's really great for inflammation. So I was like pumpkin seeds, chia seeds, hemp seeds, uh, walnuts, sesame seeds. I'm sure I'm forgetting stuff, but it's delicious. And it just looks so pretty. I would tap it on though, because I always forget to tap my little toppings in and sometimes they fall off. So then we're going to bake it at 350 for about 20 minutes. And here they are y'all. So freaking good. I warm these up in the microwaves for 15 seconds each morning. I've been pairing these in the morning with a scoop of collagen in my coffee, plus one hard boiled egg. Onto our lunch prep. I really like making soup for lunch because it warms up really nicely. So again, you can screenshot those ingredients if you'd like. I'm using a store-bought Italian sausage just to save myself some time, but you can definitely use like the 99% fat-free turkey and then add the seasonings. That is in the recipe I linked down below. So it tells you how to do that, what seasonings you need. I'm just gonna add a little bit of red pepper flakes to my sausage since mine is not a spicy sausage. Skip this if you don't like spice. Now we're gonna take about four minutes to brown our meat until it is cooked through. 
Then we're gonna remove it to a paper lined plate and save it for later. While my sausage was browning, I was cutting up my bacon. I had four pieces of bacon that I just chopped up into little bite-sized pieces, little half inch pieces, and then in these go. Now I would definitely recommend a nonstick pot or pan or maybe even like a Dutch oven because everything was sticking to my pot and it became an issue. So if you have a nonstick, that would be best, but you gotta work with what you got. Now that that bacon is nice and crisped up, I am gonna remove it to the same plate as the sausage. And I'm gonna go ahead and add my kale into this bacon fat because I don't like kale and it needs all the help it can get. So this is a deviation from the recipe below, but this will just help make it less bitter, more tender. The more time my kale cooks, the better for me. So I'm cooking this about one to two minutes just until it turns bright green and kind of wilty. And then I'm removing it and putting it on the same plate as the sausage and bacon is on. And just be careful because it made a really loud noise when I first threw it into the bacon grease, which is why I jumped back in alarm. So if you want to scare your kids or your husband, it's, it's have them stand by the stove while you're doing it. Now I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of avocado oil to my pot just because I don't have a nonstick pot. If you do have a nonstick pot, you can probably skip the oil. But I'm gonna brown up my onion and my garlic. Now the recipe said to cook them together. My heart said, hold back on the garlic, it's gonna burn, but I did it together anyway. And I would definitely recommend browning the onion and then the last 30 seconds adding the garlic because lo and behold, the garlic burnt a little bit on the bottom and um, I'm not a fan of that. Now that our onions are nice and browned, I added a little bit of water through the cooking process just to keep it from sticking. So my onions are done. So now it's in my bone broth goes. You can use bone broth or just chicken stock. I use bone broth just to help boost up the protein since I was using the store-bought sausage. There's not quite as much protein in that. And then in my potatoes that I had cut into little bite-sized pieces and then stored in that bowl with water. And I just drained the water out right before I was adding it to the pot. That way my potatoes did not turn brown as they were sitting there. We're gonna bring this up to a boil and let it cook for 10 to 20 minutes, just depending on however long it takes for your potatoes to get tender. Now that my potatoes are tender, I'm gonna add in that coconut milk. And then we're gonna stir this together about four to five minutes just letting that coconut cream that sits on top of that can really melt into the broth. Those are harder chunks to melt in sometimes, so just be a little patient. And by this point, with the onion and the garlic and everything, it's smelling amazing. Anytime you have bacon, it's gonna smell good. Now in goes our kale, our bacon, our sausage, all the things. This is another little deviation from the recipe because it says to add the kale right at the end. And again, as long, like the longer my kale can cook, the better for me. And it was delicious. And I actually like the kale in the soup. So I would definitely recommend trying those techniques if you aren't the biggest fan of kale. I'm just gonna let this warm up for about five minutes, get that meat rewarmed back up, and then it's ready to either portion out or serve. Look at all that potatoey sausage goodness. This made a fantastic, really easy to warm up meal. I warmed it up for about a minute and a half in the microwave, stirred it, and then warmed it up for another minute, and perfection. Time for some buffalo chicken casserole. Not gonna lie, there were a lot of dishes to clean after making this dinner. We're gonna cut our spaghetti squash in half. I did not show it because I did a hack job with a serrated knife because all my other knives were in the dishwasher. Then we're gonna scoop out the seeds with a spoon. I just did it over the trash can and then add this to a baking sheet. And then I'm gonna add some avocado oil. Use whatever oil spray you have. And then we're gonna add salt and pepper. This is the only seasoning this gets, so make sure it tastes good, nice and seasoned. I added a lot of pepper because I really like pepper. Our oven is preheated to 400 and all this is gonna cook at 400. So we're gonna turn them back over and then let them cook. We're gonna set the timer for 25 minutes. And at that time, I'm gonna pop my chicken in the oven to cook with it. So I have a pound of chicken here. I'm gonna add a little bit of chicken broth because I want this chicken to be very, very moist so I can shred it easily. So just a little chicken, maybe half a cup of chicken broth. And then I put salt and pepper on the chicken as well. I'm just gonna keep this over by the oven so whenever my first timer goes off, I can just pop this in. Now that that timer went off, we're gonna add our chicken and put a timer on for 20 more minutes. By that time, our spaghetti squash should be tender and I'm gonna probe my chicken to see if it's ready. 
Now it's time to cook our veggies. I have half a cup each of onion, celery, and red bell pepper. I'm gonna add these to a stove on about medium heat, just give them a little stir. Then I'm gonna add about a fourth cup of water and then add the lid. I'm just trying to steam these lightly. I'm not trying to get them caramelized. We just want them soft. Now I'm gonna go off to making my sauce. So I have half a cup of whatever kind of buffalo sauce you like. I like the Frank's wing sauce. And I'm gonna add my seasoning, which is garlic and onion powder, salt and pepper. And then I'm gonna add one egg. I like to crack the egg into a different container. That way if you get shells or anything, your whole container isn't ruined. So I've learned that lesson the hard way unfortunately. Now, because I'm dairy-free, I'm going to do a plain coconut yogurt. No sugar added, no, no flavorings added, just plain. If you are not dairy-free, you can always use Greek yogurt. You're going to get a lot more protein that way. I thought I uh, recorded me putting the yogurt in, but I forgot I had turned it off because I had to have my husband open the container because it, it wasn't going in. But now that I've got the yogurt stirred in, I'm going to add one and a half teaspoons of oil and just give it a little stir. Set this to the side until you're ready for it. In the recipe, she uses the extra coconut yogurt to drizzle on top of the casserole, but I'm going to use this ranch from Primal Kitchen because it's not buffalo chicken if it doesn't have ranch in this house. So I'm gonna use that extra coconut milk just over some strawberries. And now we have dinner and dessert for me and my husband which is awesome. I ended up having a little bit of honey and then that seed mix on top, so delicious. This plain coconut yogurt is actually really good. Just kind of tastes like a light coconut. Our veggies are nice and tender at this point, so I'm gonna put them back into the bowl that I had them in originally just to let them cool a little bit quicker. Set this to the side until we're ready. Now that our spaghetti squash is nice and tort fork tender. I'm going to keep one mitt on because this stuff is hot y'all and just shred it with my fork. I need four cups of spaghetti squash. Now, next time I'm going to use a fine mesh sieve and put it in that. That way it can kind of drain out the spaghetti squash. Spaghetti squash in general has a lot of water content. So you might notice some pooling of water in the bottom of your bowl after you've added that spaghetti squash. So I'm gonna show you that here. I just drained it as best I can. This will be baked, so you don't need to worry about getting all of it out. But if you see a big amount like that, just drain it off before you add all your shredded chicken. You can obviously shed your chicken however you like if you want to use a KitchenAid mixer or whatever. And now we're gonna mix these together with our chicken, our spaghetti squash, and those veggies a little mix and then we're gonna add in that sauce and then mix it really well. Make sure to get the center of it really well because that spaghetti squash likes to clump together and you don't want a giant clump of not buffalo-fied chicken spaghetti. You know what I mean? Now we're gonna get our container ready, a nine by 13. We're gonna spray it with a little bit of oil just so we don't have any sticking. And then we're gonna pour the mixture in this is gonna bake for 30 minutes at the 400. Then it's going to broil for 10 to 15 minutes to get that top nice and golden. And the smell in this house, once this was baking, was divine. Make sure to get it nice and flat. If you like spice, if you love buffalo, if you're looking for a way to have buffalo chicken that is a gluten-free, healthier way, this is a great dinner. But if you do not like buffalo, this is not for you. The only real flavor going on here is buffalo. I'm drizzling a little bit of ranch on top. My husband loved it. I thought it was okay. I don't, I'm not obsessed with buffalo. So would I make it again with as much effort as it is? Yes, I would for my husband, but maybe like every few months. Not Definitely not once a week.